in you. Thank you for being here with us. The prophet Katke. Welcome. I know you had to wait, but it's going to be worth it. It's always worth it to wait for the best things. Is that right? Well, he kept me because he was sharing to me what to share to you. It's a fresh word from heaven for everybody in this room who made the effort to come. He wants you to know that your lives are not the new norm. They're a taste of hell. So anybody who wants to live in hell, you've had a good taste of that for the last two years. <laughs> you will not be living in hell. You will be living in heaven when your day comes. Heaven is about to invade this earth in mighty ways. The Bible talks about these times we're entering into, and he's not about to give them up. So take your rapture rug, roll it up, and stick it in your closet and get your crown on. That's the first part of the word for you. We rule and reign with Christ in this world. Because he rules, we rule. Not in small ways. We have the right to speak to the land, the sea, and the air, and it has to obey. It doesn't have a choice. Hell does not have a choice when we speak against them. This is not their day to be in charge. That's a long ways away from now. He's not giving up the manifested sons and daughters walking this earth. The earth is crying out for that to happen. They're not crying out for the rapture to come. The evil and wickedness you see going on, if you haven't, you've been hiding your head somewhere. Uh, Satan is hoping to take over before the tribulation. He's not going to get his way. He will be kicked to the side. A lot of demons are about to be stepped on, kicked to the curb. They're under our feet. They're not over us. They are under us. Don't ever forget that. You have more power and authority in one little finger than all of hell has. Because of his blood. There's no blood, no power higher than his blood. We're about to have a great amount of that manifestation happening in the earth. The manifested sons and daughters, the kings under the king of kings, he's not talking about Solomon. He's not talking about David. He is talking about you. <laughs> know ye not that you are kings and priests unto your God? It's in the word of God. It is written, you are kings. So the kings, the spiritual kings he's over, that would be us. Say, I... I'm a king, I'm a king. Under, the king under the king of kings. I am a Lord, am a Lord. under the Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. I have the keys to the kingdom. I, I intend to use them to help change this world. I'm going to eat cake and celebrate with Jesus Christ. We're more than conquerors. He's already conquered for us. We're about to walk in that and walk on air in this world that they will know there is a God. Say, I receive it. I expect it to happen. Amen. Sit down. You, you could leave now when you'd be changed. Because my voice is anointed to carry the power of God in it. The life of God in it. The revelation of God in it. With the ideas and inventions in my voice. I am too dangerous for hot hell to handle. And we're going to make t-shirts that make that perfectly clear. I'm too dangerous for hell. And on the back of the shirt to say, I rule with Jesus Christ. It's about time this world saw some declarations like that. The truth in the word, we are part of that truth. You were appointed and anointed to be sent to the earth. Your birth was timed on this earth for now. Whether you're a year old or 200 years old, and I'm serious about the 200 years. There's actually people on this earth older than that. Who is going to believe for that? Can I see hands? 
it is going to happen. We cannot avoid, this is what God says. It is too late to escape being great for and with him. You cannot avoid it because you're here now. You're here now to make a difference, to manifest for God himself, for Jesus Christ, for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is my best friend. I would encourage you to say the same thing. <laughs> Jesus has the title of our beloved, right? Isn't he our bridegroom? Yes. He's our high priest, correct. Our savior, correct. The restorer of our soul, correct. The healer of our bodies, well, Holy Spirit has the title, Best Friend. His nickname in heaven is the Drama King. His best friend is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. If you've never seen the Holy Spirit show off, you're about to. He is about to be unleashed on this earth without measure and without permission. So if you think things are never going to change, you don't know who he is. I've had over a thousand encounters in heaven. I stopped counting a long time ago. It wasn't my job anyway. I, I didn't make it happen. I just said yes. Say, I say yes, I say yes. to encounters with Jesus Christ whenever he wants to have them. He has my permission. So write it down. My answer is yes. There you go. You're in for it now. They need your permission most of the time. You have to give permission for him to, right, live in you. Is that right? By repenting of your sins. I was four when I did that. Being a seer, I saw him step inside of me. And that's where he has lived ever since. I'm 70-something. When you turn to 70, why not have pink hair? It insults the enemy. He doesn't like pink hair ever since God said you're going to have pink hair. Hell doesn't like pink anymore. He tried every way, Satan tried every way he could for me not to have this pink hair. Do I have it? Yes. That is God's command. So if he wakes you up and says, I want you to have purple hair. Did you not just give him permission? This is heaven culture, people. Amen. They're not wearing a nightgown and a bathrobe. No, and I know that's what they thought because I have been born again my whole life. We went to church my whole life. We went to every revival they had. Slept on the church pews till we got old enough to be a part of the ministry. My dad didn't have a ministry ministry. He had a lay ministry. You know what that meant? Everyone who was sick or poor lived in our home for a while. We found this is, this is, I'm one of 15. A 15 kids my mom had, all natural. We thought she was never going to stop. That meant less of everything for us. Yay. We knew one thing growing up in that house. It would never be about us. It was going to be about every poor, sick, homeless person on the streets. Every, everyone who was in a drug flop house in the 60s, my dad would take a big pot of stew and minister to them. A lot of them are now revivalists, they're pastors, they're prophets, they're evangelists. Because he cared. He cared. My dad taught me how to love my enemies. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you know how hard the devil tries to make you mad and hate, you pe hate people? <laughs> well, we love them anyway. That's like taking a sword and piercing Satan. Do so you even want to pierce him? Forgive your enemies. And then act like they never did it. Christ doesn't remember your sins, does he? Are we supposed to be just like him? We are. True forgiveness means you forgive and you forget. And you meet that person again, you're going to be just as loving and kind to them. Invite them out to have coffee or hot chocolate. It would be hot chocolate with me. Invite them out for donuts and coffee. That's what my dad did. 
his enemies. I mean, they were horrible. They were, my brothers wanted to shoot them. Okay, they were normal. I had, I had uh, seven brothers and seven sisters. The brothers were very radical, especially one who still does secret service stuff. I can't give his name. You probably know who he is if you hear me talk about him. They, they put him on death row to minister to death row people. He's about my size, not a big guy. He says in heaven he'll be six feet. We'll see. <laughs> Unafraid of anything or anyone. God has to catch him up to outer space to talk to him. Because sometimes he doesn't want to listen. So he has his ways of letting you know since you just gave him permission. God is about to get very personal in your life. Amen. Holy Spirit talks to me almost 24 hours a day, even while I'm sleeping. I go to sleep, he's talking. I wake up, he's, he's, he's always awake. He goes everywhere I go, and he shares things, powerful, amazing things. He reveals things to me, the future. Sometimes he catches me up to heaven himself. But he also does fun things. Don't order that carrot cake. You're not going to like it. They did a lousy job making it. I'm serious. Oh, don't buy that color. That won't look good on you. If, remember, if, you, if this was your best friend, would they be telling you that? Yes, don't go down that road. It's only going to hit bumps and everything, and you know, you just don't go down there. He does things like that, too, because you give him permission to be your best friend, his best friend. Amen. So he helps me in many different ways that you wouldn't think he does. Heaven is very personal. It is, is his holiness. I mean, his throne is high and lifted up. That would be about 80, 90 feet high, no matter what you thought it was. Okay, there's steps, there's columns, steps and columns, steps and columns. And it's in the shape of what you would call a pyramid. Wow. Why do you think Satan stole that image? He's stolen almost every image that's important to God. Lightning doesn't belong to Satan. <laughs> that's what he was kicked out of heaven with. His brain was seared. This is Holy Spirit. His brain was so seared on the way down, he forgot he actually lost that first time. He's still a loser, but he keeps forgetting. We'll just keep reminding him. When Jesus, as the Word, said yes to dying on the cross, Holy Spirit is the one who brought him down as a seed. It says so in the Bible. It's written. He brought him as a seed and put him overshadowed Mary and planted that seed in the womb of Mary. Wow. Why do you think it says the seed of the woman? Come on, wow. Come on. Wow. Let's go. Is it normally? Say no. I hope you paid attention to biology. But Jesus was. Wow. Jesus was the seed of a woman. Planted from heaven into her womb. And he had to attach <laughs> that little seed to her womb. Yes. Wow. And he talked to Jesus, who was called the Word, all the way down to he all the way down to earth. He talked to him. They, they, you know what they love to do in heaven? Who wants to know? I know this is a short meeting. Might as well get some inside information. Amen. Their favorite thing to do is ride their horses. Jesus is. Horse is lightning. He has lightning coming from his eyes. He's got rainbow colors in his manes. The rainbow belongs to God, people. Amen. It literally is created by him. It flows from him in waves like the northern lights. And he'll grab a band of that rainbow and throw it across heaven. And he'll say, find, and he'll say their name. And he goes all across heaven again and we'll wrap them up in it and bring them back to the throne room. You can ride on light. You can ride on rainbows. You speak yes, and out of your mouth comes a rainbow across the crystal sea, and you walk across the crystal sea on that rainbow. Wow. So you're walking on light. Wow. You step in a kiosk with light beams coming out, and it takes you to the other side of heaven. Heaven is a world bigger than our entire cosmos. It's a world, and it's not flat, people. Amen. The earth is not flat. The earth is a shadow of heaven. I've been there. It's not flat. They're still trying to find the end of something. They never will. <laughs> These are some of the revelations I was shown in heaven. I have been to the future. I've seen the new earth. I have walked on the new earth. I've seen some of the planets he'll make for us to go and have fun without a spaceship, without a spacesuit. 
were heaven's astronauts. Do you know the one thing I wanted to be my whole life growing up? An astronaut. Why? Because I wanted to see what was out there. I had such curiosity. I was so amazed by the beauty of all the cosmos. Why do I say cosmos instead of universe? A universe is not man-made. It's not God-made. It's a big bang. Cosmos means made by God. In the old Hebrew writings, they always called it cosmos. We're going to have the Cosmos Cafe there. you got something for anyone else. We're actually going to create rival Starbucks. Wow. It'll be like walking in heaven. The menu is, the food will be. We'll have a gallery you can walk through and see places in heaven. Leave, we'll have an encounter room you can go into and leave. Fill with the Holy Spirit and get born again. Amen. For free. God is interested in this world. He made it for a purpose. It really hasn't attained its full purpose. Actually, this earth is a baby world compared to a lot of the others. And this country is a baby country. See how long the other ones have been around. And look how long America's been around. Well, he ain't going to abort this baby. He's not going to abort this country. He is not turning it over to Satan. He's not turning it over to wicked, evil people. I think they're in heaven right now making millstones. Do you know how big a millstone is? It can be 20 feet high and six foot thick. It would be better for them to have that tied around their neck than to touch a baby or abort a little spirit God sent. He is not happy with it. He is against abortion, about the most against abortion being I know. He does not want them to lose their life, their journey, their purpose. He is not happy when they come back home to heaven, in case you wondered what happened to them. Their own guardian angels come the day they are conceived. At the time of conception, that little spirit and soul is knit together to that dot of flesh in the mother's womb. That's when life begins. Then. Not three months later, four months later, four weeks later. It's right then. Their angels are sent with them. If they don't make it, their angels take them back to heaven. And just so maybe no one's told you this, if they didn't achieve their purpose, some of them, he's taking that spirit and sticking it back in himself. And he will resend it because he has to have them on the earth. I know specifically a mother, a, a powerful mother. of She was a mother, beautiful woman of God. And their baby, she was very early on. It began to struggle and God said, I'm taking him back. He didn't want me to fight or struggle. They prayed and fasted and... And they said, we don't know why, but we felt a release. And I said, I'll tell you why. God said to tell you, he put him back inside of him. And he will resend them. Guess what? They got pregnant. And they had their little boy after all. Say, so he is sovereign. He knows who he must have on this earth. But because I'm here... I made, I made it. I intend, I intend to complete everything God has planned for my life. So be it. You have filled your spirit and your soul so much. Right now there's light coming out of you. When you declare the things, if whatever you de declare, dare to declare and decree, what does it say? It shall be established unto you. So if you're waiting on things from God, say it. Amen. Say it. There's life in your voice. There's power in your voice. Amen. You are here for a purpose. People will talk about these generations, generations to come. The manifested sons and daughters will make history, change history, set in motion new inventions, and show us what we do have the right to do. We're special. And I don't mind saying that at all. Amen. My life was happy when I could crawl in my canvas hammock in the, in the middle of the yard filled with trees to hide. 
from all my siblings. You grew up with 14 kids. 50 pounds, 50 pounds of potatoes a week, five flats of eggs a week. We ate a lot of bread. Thank God for the, you know, the government gave us cheese. Thank God we had cheese. Because most of our food we gave away. We loved everybody. We didn't care what color you were. God likes variety. Amen. He loves you whatever color he made you. Amen. You didn't pick your color at birth, people. He sent you that way for a reason. Amen. You're wonderful. Amen. He is very delighted that you waited. Amen. Are you glad you waited? Amen. The most important thing of all of heaven is all of us. We are God's children. The reason you get your own, all this is revelation. You're getting filled with revelation right now. Amen. This is for everyone here, okay? He chooses your, your time of your birth on the earth for a reason for that. Sometimes you're here to represent the generations that went before you and the price they paid. I'm here right now doing this because of the, the seven generations that went before me. They never turned back from God. I always went forward. Always do what they were asked. They learned the joy of obedience. When you learn the joy of obedience, you're no longer judged for certain things. Obedience is one of the most important things you learn, but it's not supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be delightful. I'd rather obey God than be slammed under the hand of Satan and forced to do things. There's no breakfast in hell, no lunch or dinner in hell. There's no shady place to sit in. There's nothing. I want you to know this. Hitler is still hanging on the meat hook he was put on when he came home to hell. That was his reward. And Satan hasn't changed. All those he's lied and deceived and they said yes to him, they will get nothing. God, on the other hand, you can't say no to his rewards. He won't let you. He will not let you say no to anything he's got for you up there. I've been in so many mansions. They're amazing. They're powerful sky mansions. You step into a thing and you go up and it goes, takes you, zip you up there. It's wonderful. You can live under the crystal sea or on top of the crystal sea. You can live in the mountain of spices. You can live in the Titans, which is the father's personal backyard. The largest mountain ranges in heaven are called the Titans. I couldn't draw a map as much as I've seen. There's no way I could. It's such a small thing. But you'll never, ever, ever regret that you gave yourself to Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll probably never know how many people's lives we've touched or even maybe led them towards salvation. Until you get there, you will. They'll probably meet you at the gate and tell you thank you. This is another thing I'll tell you, then I'm going to tell you why I really came. <laughs> he always likes to give introductions to heaven because so many people don't know what it is. Well, when I be bored worshiping, I went, why would you be bored worshiping when you get to be up there with the seraphim? Blue fire coming out of their heads. But you've been in praise in the throne room. You're raised up off the floor. You praise in the air of the throne room. No, it's not boring. There's nothing boring there. Heaven is 50-50. 50 holy, splendor and wonder, and 50% fun. Are you a child? Do you go home as his son or daughter? Would you be in trouble if you didn't have fun for somebody? He chose for us to be young. Nobody looks older than 20. You, I know. I, I've, I have spoken to senior citizens' homes. They all said, okay, they gathered, let's go right now. I said, let me leave first so I'm not accused of killing you. <laughs> I don't want them to come and find a bunch of dead bodies. I can't explain to them what just happened, okay? So anyway, you, yes, I represent the generations that went before me. So they walked in the path God gave them. I get to walk on air. Amen. I have already walked on air. I'm an air walker, tormentor of demons. Amen. And that actually says that in my bio. I don't mind letting people know what I do for a living. Why am I here? I'm heaven culture on the earth. I'm introducing a new culture. It's called heaven culture. 
And you're not bored while you do it. You're filled with the power of God while you do it. You'll handle the wealth of the wicked. Okay, don't give it all away right now, wicked, because we're going to get it. Is that what the word says? So who's righteous here? <laughs> get ready for God's money train to come by your place. And say, I expect it. That is the Father's newest thing. He used to say, tell them to say, I receive it. He says, now tell them to expect it. He'll write it down if you say that. My own father many times is invited into God's, um, he has his own place off of the way where the, his throne is. He has another place, has a big long table, and he's got a throne in there. I've seen my dad in there in a book this thick, writing things down for him. Because he forgave his enemies. That's why he got that position. Remember the next time somebody, you know, just cusses you out? Turn around and say, well, I'll lose that from my soul. But I will bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just watch out for the Holy Spirit. He's my best friend. He may be visiting you in the middle of the night. And then just walk away. <laughs> Number one, you didn't get angry. That freaked them out. Number two, you didn't cuss them back. That freaked them out again. Number three, they were totally freaked out by the Holy Spirit visiting them in the middle of the night. Therefore, you have done what? You have pierced the enemy. Because there's demons on people's shoulders, and they'll scream in their ear what to say. That's how that happens. People get in this fight, and sometimes it escalates until somebody dies. That's how it happens. They'll jump back and forth and scream in your ear what to say. In the moment of your anger and your wrath, you're doing exactly what Satan wants. Just say something. <laughs> Throws him off in left field. I love you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit will be visiting you in the middle of the night. Just lay down, roll over, and give up. It will be much easier than fighting him. He may catch you up to heaven, let you stand in the glory around the throne. You either say yes or you're toast. When I send the host, I always yell to them, Go host, make burnt toast! There's toast, and then there's burnt toast. Why not burn the enemy? They don't care about you. What they can use, kill, seal, and destroy is their M.O. Jesus' M.O., life and life more abundantly. So if you decide to leave and not listen to any more, vote for Trump if you haven't done it so far. I do not worship Trump, and heaven does not worship him. He does not worship himself. But he knows, he knows, by the way, he has been born again. He knows that he knows. He knows God, Jesus is the greatest thing alive, and he'll say that. I am not the greatest person alive, and they'll all laugh, oh, who is? His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And then that makes the left gnash their teeth. The ones driven by demons really gnash their teeth. They don't want to hear about God. That's number one reason why they don't want him here, because he lets us know God. God did choose him and anointed and appointed him. Because he was raised from the time he was young to do what he's doing now. His grandparents were powerful Christians. They prayed him into his place where he belonged. And there's no way he is ever surrendering. He is never going to stop going after that presidential seat because God already gave it to him. They have already lost. Now, they have already lost. A demon was assigned, an entity, an entity was assigned to destroy me. And I have people that know who that is, the entity, you know that. And they walked past them the last time they saw them. They said, well, we've already lost. And God told me, they've already lost. So hell is full of losers because they chose it. But Trump is a winner. God calls him a winner. He is our president. He was president since 2016. He was president in 2020 because he won that election. He will be president again. 
whether it's from the election or whatever else God chooses, he is our president even now. He's number 46. He's 45, 46. He will be 47. On all of his ball caps he would make, he would go 45, comma 47. And I, 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 I talked to him and said, you know what? You're wrong. Why do you have that comma? Oh, you know, 46, 47. No, 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 no. You're 45, 46, you will be 47. You need to change that ball cap to go 45 through 47. He changed it. He won. Losers, everybody say this, losers are not the winners because they lost. No matter how hard they try, they lost. Trump is our president because he won in 2020. You just said it yourself. They have to, if that's ever proven in court, they have to give him his four years because we the people chose him. No one else gets to choose. They're making their own laws, criminal laws, okay. They're making the real laws illegal and they're making what's illegal the real law. Is that wrong? That's because they're losers. People could say, I keep hoping it'll get better. I said, where? It's not going to get better from them. They're actually doing what they planned to destroy us. They planned it. They planned it for years. This isn't something new. This is something they have been waiting to do. That's why it's only gotten worse. Well, it's about to be very worse for them. It will not be worse for us. God has special things planned for all those who never gave up, who didn't surrender to the darkness, don't let fear interfere, and I tell you why Trump is wearing fear not. I'm waiting for the hat to come out, because when he called me, when he texted me 20 minutes before he was shot from the platform at the convention, he texted me and said, I want to know, is there anything else I need to tell the people? He meant from God. Out of 90 prophets, he picked four to take words from. I happen to be one of those people. Because I started, I was, I was doing that in 2015, saying he would win. I went to the Capitol building and told everybody there, he's winning. This is in 2016. Whether you like it or not, people walking down the sidewalk outside the Capitol, whether you like it or not, Trump is winning. God picked him and anointed him. They were laughing at me. Went, they weren't laughing. They weren't laughing the next day. I knew and then, I did a video and posted it. Whether anybody likes it or not out there, God picked him, chose him, anointed him. He's his all-American boy who's all for America. Amen. He never said to worship him, but he is the president and we need to honor him. Amen. So I don't worship him. I only worship one God. That would be Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I encourage him all the time with the word of God or words from God himself. But on that day when he was shot and he texted me that, he said, what should I know? I got to get out of I got to start speaking pretty soon. What should I know? And God said, tell him I said this. This is what I said. This is what God said. No matter what happens today, don't let it take you off your path. No matter what you think it is, I have your back. You will not die. I didn't even know it was going to happen. You will not die. You'll keep going forward. Don't stop. You will achieve what I have sent you there for. So these are what he ended with. So fear not. When he got shot in his ear and he stood up and he goes, fight, fight, fight. You know why he said that? Because he knew he wasn't going to die. He knew from that moment he got born again. He's found the biggest Bible he can get his hands on and shake it at the people. Amen. You're the greatest thing that ever lived. No, I'm not. Jesus Christ is. Amen. He knows who's in charge. He knows who he believes in. So no matter what your opinion is, don't listen to the fake news. In a few minutes, we're all going to stand up and loose every word of the fake news out of our soul. Don't keep it in your soul. If you listen to lies all the time, what will happen? You will believe them. That's how your soul operates. It's your, your mind, right? Your will, 
Your emotions are your actions. So that's who you are. You're not a human being. You are a living soul. Your soul is the most important in you. Your spirit's part of it. They're together. They're, they operate together. So I was waiting to get the ball cap. He sent me eight ball caps to say, never surrender. I don't need another one. No. So he's, he texted me the other day, I'm sending you the gold one because, you know, I want you to have the gold one. I'm still waiting for fear not. So what did he do? He sent me a t-shirt that says fear not. And it's him. Fear not. Because that's what God said to him. So he does know who he is. And I know the other prophets. And we're all telling him the same thing. Don't give up. Don't look back. You are president. You will be president. How would you like to him to have eight years? Because yeah. if he really wins this election, do they still have to give him the four years he lost and was stolen? Yes. yes. They do. That's going to make them happy, isn't it? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Can we get me? I'm not like this because I think I'm full of anything. I'm not full of myself. I stopped doing that. I don't think I ever did that. Remember, I was part of the tribe. We have 150 family members now. Thank God I'm not watching over all of them. But most of them love Trump. My dad's in heaven cheering him on right now. Amen. My mom is 93. She lives with me, and she'll fight anybody with her, with her, uh, what does she carry? Her plum switch. No, she don't need a cane. Amen. She don't need a wheelchair either. Amen. She travels all over the world. While I speak, she now is going to be operating the baby zone. People, if you can't have babies, contact her. Wow. She's had 15. She's anointed. But you're going to have to find out how you raise that child before she'll ever pray for you. She's getting the whole thing set up. She's going to operate the marriage zone. And this is what she says. This is what, uh, this is what Holy Spirit said, my best friend. Tell your mom to write this down. It's her motto. So, girl, when you look for a man, find one that can live off the land. If you find a suit, give him the boot. He won't know how to do anything. That's my mom's motto for the, for the marriage zone. <laughs> Holy Spirit has a great sense. I haven't told her that yet, by the way. So I'll have to tell her. So anyway, we're going to stand up in a few minutes, and you're going to learn how to be a soul doctor. How many people know what a soul doctor is? Hallelujah. If you found a soul doctor and went to them, you'd never need a physical doctor at all. You will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Therefore, if your soul is prospering, you'll never have sickness. You'll never have disease. Because that word be -E in the Bible means a state of existence. He became poor that we might be rich. That's the state of existence. So prospering and your soul prospering, that is a thing that's a state of existence. That's what's coming for the body. So if you, if, you want, if you want to be whole all the time, make sure your soul is prospering. So it matters what you feed it. How do you feed your soul? What you watch, what you say, where you go, who your best friends are, what you believe. It fills your soul. Your soul has layers. It's like if you take a book and put it back to back, all those pages fanning out would each be a layer of you. It would be you. The images inside your soul, that's how it looks like. When you watch things that are not God, darkness goes between the layers. You don't want that darkness there. Don't let him see gray. Don't let the enemy see gray. Here's all this light from you and loving Jesus, but you can still choose with your will to do something you shouldn't. Darkness goes in there. So we're going to get rid of that, all right? Stand up. When God sends things to do, it takes three minutes. He came into my room one time and was there for four hours, kept taking me back and forth to heaven, showed me a human soul, what it looked like, how he designed it, how it operates. Then he taught me how to be a soul doctor. He said, now go, now go train everybody. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. Thank you, Jesus. I am a prophet. I am a revelator. But I train. Jesus 
was a trainer, wasn't he? He had to train those hard-headed men, the merry men. I was taken back and shown them all following him at one time. This will take you one minute. It's going to be funny. And here they were going along behind the king of kings, right? They knew he was the lord of glory. And here they are walking. You can sit down if you don't want to stand up. But here they are, right? They're, they're Luke's patients are following him. Remember, he was a physician. They didn't want to lose their doctor. Why are you going? Where are you going to see those people? What about us? Don't we matter to you? And then there was, of course, the tax collector, dear God in heaven, throwing rocks. You had to dodge the rocks when you were walking with Jesus because they were throwing them at the, t at the tax collector. Nobody liked the tax collector. Is that right? Yeah. So this was his. There's the merry men, James and John, fighting alongside the road, okay? They, when they started, they weren't like they were at the end of their life. They were fighting over girls. This is, this, I actually went on a trip behind them. I walked on the same sandy road going, oh, Jesus, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jesus, I bless you. <laughs> what did he say in there? How long am I going to put up with? Did he say that about his men? Yeah. Would y'all like to be in charge of them? <laughs> he'd, he'd train them with the miracles that happened. Then when they wanted something, they wanted him to go buy it. They didn't want to do the miracles. Why aren't you doing what I taught you to do? He was asleep when the storm came. It was like a hurricane. People want some little windy thing. It was like a hurricane. He was sleeping in the boat, and they woke him up. We're going to drown. And there was the Lord of glory. We're going to drown. Get up. Do something. He went, don't you understand? I already showed you that. He gets up, so he rebukes the storm, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other time when he's calling them to come out of the boat to join him, remember that? Yeah. Thank God for Peter. He did something right. He's the only one that stepped up to walk on the water, right? But still, Peter does not greet you. This is the last part of this, of this. Um, Peter doesn't greet you at the gate. I know the Catholics kind of started that. You know, they thought St. Peter would be the one. Oh, no, he wanted to cut off everybody's ear. He wanted to beat them with his sword. Is this true about Peter? Yeah. No, he'll be fishing in the Crystal Sea, people. He will be my husband's new best friend because he is a fisherman. Peter doesn't greet you at the gate. Father Abraham greets you at the gate. Yay! And he's the big guy. And he'll come up and he'll... No shaking of hands in heaven. Just forget that. Nobody shakes hands in heaven. They hug. They hug. Hugs come from heaven. And Father Abraham will get you in his big old arms and just engulf you inside of himself. So we don't have to worry about someone smelling like fish. My freezer had fish ice for years because my husband's anointed to catch fish. I don't like fish. They smell. They're slimy. He loves it. I'll go to take pictures of him. I'm a photographer. I'll take pictures of his fish all day long. I just don't want to do nothing with him. Let Willie be free. Amen. Maybe you're from the generation that you don't know what that means. <laughs> if you're 16 and older, you know who Willie is, right? The whales. That will, that's what I say at a restaurant. We have all this on the menu. We have seafood. No. Let Willie be free. Now, if this person is 25, they don't have a clue who Willie is. Now, let Willie be free. I don't want seafood. Just give me a bob. Bacon on bread. You go when it's not breakfast, you can still have breakfast. Well, we don't have breakfast. Do you have bacon? Oh, yes. Do you have bread? Yes. Can you toast it? Yes. Give me a bob. I still have breakfast. I love you all very much. I'm here to tell you, he loves you without measure. I do have the f a word for you. This is the first part of this word. You should write it down. Sit down for a minute. I only say it with that voice because that's how I talk to my siblings. <laughs> No, you don't get a choice. I'm older than you. 
I can run faster. I used to run track. Yeah. And I beat the guys over the hurdles. Wow. I have a big voice because I had to five blocks down the street, call my brothers home to dinner, and there was no way I was walking down there to drag them home. Come and eat or I'll eat it for you. This is his word. It is my great pleasure. This is the Lord speaking. It is my great pleasure to reveal you as my treasure. And in these days, to operate without measure. That's the word. So there will be things to do in this world. New ideas, new inventions, new ways to do things, new food to eat. If you want to tip organic, farming will be one of the biggest industries in this country. It will be. People don't want fake food. They don't want poison food. They don't want food that's been messed with. They don't want bioengineered food. They don't want GMO. <laughs> you don't want it, do you? We're going we're gonna to start saying we don't want it. So I'm telling people that I know are interested, you better start planning and finding out what it does to do organic farming. Because that would be one of the biggest sellers in this country. And we're not just impacting this country. God's not just taking this country. He's going to shift governments so we can shape those nations. You can put that down as number two. He said you will shift governments by me sending you to the leaders, leading them to Christ. They will open the door for their whole nation to be shaped for God. We will shift governments to shape nations for God. And they'll be so excited to see you. You know why? Because you know God. And they're tired of the witchcraft. They're tired of the evil. They're tired of the wickedness, and there's a lot of leaders even right now getting born again. So that's your number two thing, right? Shift governments. That means the heads of the government to shape nations. Number three, learn to operate in the idea zone. You invite it. And he will drop into you ideas of things never invented before. And then he'll open the door for someone to pay for it. Because we're creators. Because he's a creator. So creating with God is number three. Do you like your future? He's going to create regions of light where there's so much glory, crime will flee from that city and evil will flee, that's demons, like dust from those cities. Be prepared to live in a region of light. These are his plans. Don't ever stop praying for your family members who don't know him. Because he is bringing restoration in families. All of those who've been praying for your family, get ready for that to begin to happen. Restoration of families say they need to be on my list. That's your list. That you recognize that, you realize that God is going to do that. So if they call you, don't be mean to them. <laughs> Send a card saying... <laughs> We love you. Another thing that's going to start changing is people actually start sending real greeting cards. Everything will not be done on the computer or your iPad. Something new God just spoke to me about today is he's going to have camps, boot camp, for young people, like boys starting age 10. They will teach them how to live the life they should be living. It won't be their cell phone. They won't be allowed there. 
You need to make a call home, go to the office and get, make your phone call. You can't take your iPad, your computer, or your cell phone. Why? You're going to be learning. What is the land? How do you do something with the land? How do you learn to do anything, make anything? How do you understand how to do stuff that you never knew before because you were too busy looking at your iPad or your phone? Communicating will be on that list by voice, by meeting people. What do you do with somebody you meet? You're going to be taught how to talk to them. You're going to be taught how to live what we lived 50 years ago. You're not going backwards. You're actually going forward. You're going to get heaven culture put in you. We'll also have a place of grace for young girls to go to learn how to dress properly. How to talk to people properly. How to be presentable at the office place. And don't take every invitation you get no matter where you go. Your value and worth will be established into you. These are the girls, okay? They need to know things they've never been shown. Is that true? Yes. Boys need to. And then we'll have a place like that for teenagers. Amen. Won't that be wonderful? Yes. It could be held on a ranch. It could be held at a place that has a lot of forestry and lakes and stuff. They're going to learn about the places they go to. They can go to more than one place. They're going to learn about this world, why God made it. And what their place is in it that they never got to do before. You don't have to go to the movies to learn everything. And don't let TV teach you nothing. 90% of that is dark. I was invited to speak at uh, a head of an intercessory group. I won't tell you. It wasn't anywhere in this. Well, not anywhere around here. I was invited to share about heaven. But also they wanted to be tweaked. That was not the best thing they ever said. Please come and show us what we're doing wrong. I said, are you sure you want me to do that? Because you know I'm going to tell you the truth. From the leaders, oh, yes, whatever it is, we really want to know. So I got to stay in their home. And they took me past their grandson's bedroom. We don't know what he's doing on. And he had two big angels outside his room. I don't think I'd be worried about your grandson. Then we go in the living room, two demons standing on either side of the television. And the Holy Spirit said, they're not guests. Their residents from what they watched. We have an extensive library, 300 DVDs. Watch you want to. Watch what you want to. And I'm looking, I told you, Jen, we aren't watching nothing here. We're not going to watch one single thing here. <laughs> and they said, We're going to go off for a while. Y'all just make yourself at home. I want this in my home. I didn't say that to them. <laughs> Not my home. These were the head of the group. They had like 40 intercessors under them, and I was going to get to speak to all of them. Then we had a big dinner the last night when I revealed everything. <laughs> the minute they left, I went, you demons can't say one word to me, and I know they invited you. You're not saying nothing. Turn your back and look at the wall. You're not worth anything to me, and you're not impacting me, and I'm not going through that portal you have stopped. Guess what? I'm severing it. Sever the portal of hell right now. And it went, Psh! Don't go into a hotel room until you have severed every portal. You sever every portal that was opened in there. Because whatever they watched stays in the room. I send my host to tear down every stronghold of Satan in every hotel. Then I send 500,000 to wipe out the entire city. Pull down every stronghold of Satan, shred every platform into dust. I'm not here to be a part of hell. They're being sent out. Drag them off to the courts of heaven and find out what their judgment's going to be. But I'm not here to be a part of them. And I'm not sleeping with them. I'm not eating with them. And I'm not going to have conversation around them. I lay my hands on every bed. I cleanse it for the kingdom. And fire comes in and goes, Shoo! You as a believer carry that. Amen. You carry that. We don't have to put up with hell. I cleanse every part of that hotel. Then I ask for favor with the people who are in leadership there. I ask for favor all the people who work in the room. And then I usually meet with them and give them one of my books. You want to hear about heaven? Take this book and read it. 
Then you will impact everything. Every restaurant you ever go to, lay your hands on the table. I release the anointing that destroys the yoke of darkness in this table. I will take my glass that they give to me. I release the anointing into this glass. It will remain and it will never, the anointing will never wash off or wear off. Whoever picks up this glass and drinks out of it, the anointing will invade their soul. I pick up the silverware, do the same thing. I touch the place, I do the same thing. And then I tip big. Then they want me to always come back. But I'm not eating with the enemy. Don't invite him to your home. Don't let him in your home. When you go home, open the door and kick him out. Every night before I'll go to bed, I come out there. Usually when they're all asleep, okay, but sometimes I yell. Not always. Sometimes I go out in the middle of the street, but we're in a gated community, so I probably wouldn't be able to yell until I find out who's believers, okay, over there. Uh, I don't like the enemy. Amen. So if you ever wondered, no, I don't partner with hell. Amen. You, you see my pen? I don't do demons. We'll have a whole bunch of them when our supplies come in. There is something I'm going to show you before we leave, but first we're going to lose from your soul, so now we'll do it. Get up. I'm sorry if I'm, I went past my time. I'm sorry. This is something that God wants you to know. You can use it for the rest of your life. You can train other people. I was taken into the future, and on doors of wa or walls on doors, I saw Soul Doctor. They were in gyms. They were in high schools. They were in restaurants. They were in office buildings. They had a Soul Doctor there. That meant anytime anybody in that whole building had a problem with their soul, they would go see them. They could loose everything of hell out, bind everything to God in. I give you the keys to the kingdom. You are not of this world, but you are part of a heavenly kingdom that will never expire. You have positions in that kingdom because you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. The best thing he gave and people still don't get it. I give you the keys to the kingdom was one of the best things he could ever give them. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Pornography, drugs, criminal activity, insanity, abuse, unforgiveness. Let's go still down the list. Hate, unworthiness, sorrow pain, mental problems, it doesn't matter what it is, those keys will set you free from that. I'm going to give you an example. I met somebody who was, they, they were wanting to take their life, their boyfriend dumped them. Well, so what? They didn't deserve you. Your girlfriend dumped you and you want to commit suicide. They weren't worthy of you. Let them find someone else. That's probably a favor. Is that correct? If you have someone in your mirror and they abuse you, physically abuse you, get rid of them. Say, kick them to the curb. Them to the curb. Marriage, Marriage is not about abuse. Not about the, the husband the is supposed to watch out for the weaker vessel, the love them like Christ loved the church, and he died for the church. That's what the husband does. Honor your husband. Submit to his knowledge and understanding because that's his way of helping us. So they love, the wife honors, there is nowhere abuse is in there. God is against abuse. He would not tell you to stay with your husband or your wife if they were abusing you. So kick them to the curb, because guess what? You don't have a covenant. What God has joined together that's a covenant. Let not man put asunder. But what you join together from your own soul and your flesh is not a covenant. It's a contract. It can be broken. That doesn't mean you can dump anyone just because you're tired of them. That's not what I'm saying. Don't go home and say, cat said, kick you to the curb because I'm tired of you. No, you pray for them. You stand in the gap for them. Remember, that's what we're supposed to do. Honor one another. And whatever you do, please keep going on dates. We have been married how long? 47 years. We still date. 
We still go on dates. That's not just a candy bar and, you know, a Coke. <laughs> in case you wondered. <laughs> Marriage is supposed to be something God designed for us to have someone with us for our life. And men needed help. He looked down to Adam, who probably looked five times for the jar of ketchup in his cave or wherever he was. I can't find it, God. It's not there. I'll send woman. They move one thing in front of the ketchup, and amazingly, there is the ketchup. We have 5,000 brain links in our brain. Men have five. We can talk. We can cook, we can clean, we can do shopping lists, pray with a friend over the phone, all at the same time. My husband can fish and catch fish everywhere he goes. It's his gift, right? Yes. So fishing, well, God first. Fishing, well, I'm in there somewhere. God fishing me. <laughs> Eating is where he's in the top of that list up there somewhere, right? God calls him the military man, and boy, who could live off the land. And I am not a pop tent person. Camping out is the Ramada Inn or the Hilton. It's not a tent where lizards jump out of the tree, bugs crawl on the ground, the rain comes and floats your blankets in your, in your mattresses away if you're in Florida. Though I didn't sign up, I signed up for boating. He loves boating. I love boating. Yay. Uh, we love each other. We love God and we love boating. So there you go. We got three things in common. Not seafood. So right now, no matter what is in you that is bothering you, whether it's words you spoke over yourself, someone said to you, which are worthless words, because God doesn't give critical words to people. Right? He doesn't. The Holy Spirit can correct you if you've been put yourself under someone who you will receive correction from that's different. But no people out there have the right to judge you. Only God judges us. He's the one who sits on the judgment seat in heaven. Is that right? Yes. So here we go. We're going to do this. I'm, I'm going to first show you one example, and then we'll all just do it. And whatever's in your soul that you don't like, all the way back to your birth, you can get rid of it. No matter what it was. You will not have it anymore. What happens is when you lose things with the keys, heaven comes down and pulls it out like it was never there. When you bind things to your soul, heaven comes down and puts it in your soul, and no one can take it from you. That's why those keys were so valuable. So right now we're going to use the keys. Right? So I'm going to demonstrate, okay? So there's this young girl who was dumped by somebody. She wasn't a Christian, by the way, but she had to use the name of Jesus. She didn't care. My sister always, my sister Patty always lets me know, this person's going to say, you know what, you know what you're going to do here. I'm just here. I'll just give you the phone. So this is what I said to the girl. I said, okay, my name is Kat. She didn't know who I was. I said, are you suffering? Are you in anguish? Do you want to take your life? Because that's not why God called you here. She's bawling, going, oh, so-and-so left me. My heart's broken. My life is shredded. I can't live again. I said, well, then just get rid of him. Well, he left himself. Well, that was probably a blessing. But you know where you didn't get rid of him? In your soul. So we're going to do that right now. So I told the girls, I'm going to lead you in this prayer, and you have to say in the name of Jesus, or it won't work. So she was really in anguish. I'm not making fun of it. She was really in anguish. She didn't want to live again. And so I let her, I said, so in the name of Jesus Christ, this is what I told her to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I choose with my will, she still has a will, to lose from my soul because of Christ. Every word, every action, every abuse that was ever given to me, say his name. I lose all that and him from my soul completely that I never desire again to know him or to be with him ever. In Jesus' holy name, so be it. And all of a sudden, she starts yelling out loud. The pain is gone. The suffering is gone. I don't feel anything except excited. I have a life. I want to live. I don't want to die. Why did I think I wanted to die? He wasn't worth it anyway. I'm... She's still going on. I said, okay, stop. In the Bible, it says, when you empty it all, don't leave it empty. 
We're going to put something in your soul right now. So do you want to receive Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. He took this from me. Then let's just do that first. I repent of my sins. So she said, I repent of my sins. No matter how long ago it was or what it was, I repent and ask for Christ to cleanse me with the blood. So she said all that. And she said, amen. I said, now we're going to put something. Now I choose to use the keys to the kingdom as an act of my will to bind to my soul the love of God, the life of God, the plans of God, the promises in the word of God, I bind his will for me, his way for me. I bind to my soul Jesus Christ who died on the cross for me that I might know him and know him well. I bind to my soul the plans, the creativity, the life he has for me. I bind to my soul his plans and the person I find will know him, will love Christ, and then I will be on God's path. In Jesus' name, amen. Then she started shouting because she was celebrating because she was free. So that's pretty much what you're going to do. Everybody got that? Yes. So here we go. As an act of my will, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I choose with my will to use the keys to the kingdom. I choose to loose from my soul all sickness, all disease, all pain, all mental issues, all unforgiveness, all poverty, any drugs, any pornography, any hate, any unworthiness. I, I bind that. Out of my no, you know, you're loosing from your soul. We're loosing, loosing. I loose it from my soul in Jesus' name. I loose from my soul confusion, strife, fear, spirits of fear, spirits of strife, spirits of confusion. I will not have them in my soul. I loose from my soul all cares. All hate, all hate and all, I don't remember what the last one was, all insecurity, all insecurity. And, all and all poverty. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. So, be so be it. So right now I see angels in here pulling stuff out of everybody. They're, they're just pulling it out. It looks like gray matter, pulling it out everywhere. So I'm going to wait just a second. Say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. for setting me free. I'm going to choose the keys to the kingdom to bind the things of God to my soul. So here we go. Say, I choose to bind to my soul the life of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the salvation of Jesus Christ, his strategies, his will, his way, his creativity, his his joy, his grace, his peace. I am free to be who he called me to be. So I bind to my soul his health, his wealth, his plans, his word. I want to make him happy, to bless him, to praise him to worship him because I know how to operate with the keys to the kingdom. I'll never let Satan beat me up again. All words that were spoken to me in meanness and criticism, I loose them from my soul forever. And I bind to my soul your words of life, God. Your plans for me. Your celebration of me. That I will never stop binding. In Jesus' name, I am free and I am blessed. Amen. Woo! Woo-hoo! Amen. So sit down. We, we the, you know, the Father came in person. People go, you can't see the Father. But excuse me, but I know people in the Bible who did. Is that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Elijah definitely saw him. 
Elijah looks pretty good in heaven. Enoch has emerald eyes. You feel his frequency before you see him in heaven. You have frequencies. Whatever you have become for Christ makes that frequency go higher or lower. Supercharge your frequency. Amen. Speak the word of God out loud. The enemy won't want you to word that God. It is that word of God. It is filled with life. If you want to raise a child, there's only one way to do it God's way affection, direction, and correction. If you leave one of those out, they're not going to be a well rounded individual. If you don't use correction, they'll think the world owes them a living. They'll treat people any way they want to. If you don't give direction, they'll never know how to plan for their life, what to plan for their life, what they can even do, how to do it, what should we learn, what should we understand, you won't have it. And if you don't get affection, you won't know how to love. You won't know how to accept it. You won't know how to give it. So that's the way you raise a child. Or your pet... Say, pets have a soul. They can learn how they should act and treat others. In heaven, my pet will be waiting. They wear clothes. They will not sit on the floor and eat out of a dog dish. They will sit at the table with me and have conversation. I hope you like that. If you have a dog that never stops barking, you'll never be lonely because they'll never stop talking to you. They, all the animals in heaven talk. The rocks talk. The trees talk. The crystal sea talks. Everything has a voice in heaven. That's the way it's supposed to be. God said he took the voice out of the animal so they couldn't become guilty of sin because man fell. He didn't want that passed on to them. They're all innocent. That's why they go to heaven. They have a soul because the word says they do. Remember when he told Noah, put every animal on the earth that has a spirit of life in them. Go back to when Adam was made. His body was laying there, no life in it. And the father and the son do everything together. Okay, the son made the body. But the life that was put in him came from the Father because we all lived in him. He leans over and breathes in Adam's nostrils the spirit of life that was Adam's spirit, Adam's soul, and Adam became a living soul. That same spirit of life is what he's talking about when he told Noah, put every animal on the earth. There's a spirit of life. The animals he put on there had a soul and they had a spirit. They couldn't decide if they liked you, where they were going to sit, if they were upset with you because you were home late. We know what happens then. Uh, so they had... Choices, excuse me. I've been talking a lot. Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Has God ever asked you to do a royal fast? A royal fast is fasting every single thing that is your favorite. I know, isn't that nice? What you wear, you cannot wear your favorite clothes. Where you go, you can't go to your favorite places. What you eat, you can't eat anything that is your favorite. My food group was pizza, Dr. Pepper, and chocolate ice cream. He had me fasted for almost nine years. Yeah, when he's, when, he's, when he's training a prophet, he does weird stuff. Okay, At least I didn't have to wear camel hair turned inside out. I didn't cook my food on animal dung. I didn't sleep naked on one side, then naked on the other side for two years. So I'd say, you know, the way he's trained me, you're going to have pink hair. He didn't ask me. He told me, remember that permission thing? You're going to have pink hair. You know why? You can't hide. So people see that pink hair. They're going to say, oh, what beautiful pink hair. Well, what is that? It's heaven culture. What do you mean heaven culture? Well, God catches me up to heaven without notice as many times as he wants to. Show me how they live there so I can tell you. Are you interested? I've never had a sinner say no. Not one sinner ever said, no, I'm not interested. What did it look like? What did he look like? How do they live up there? No, it was the religious-minded people. Your pink hair is just too much. You've stepped off the, the wrong, you just, slipped, you just stepped off the whole edge. You're just gone. I was gone at age four when I received Christ. 
But trust me, it won't, oh, it'll scare them. They won't want to come. I said, then why does your wife come to my meetings? These are pastors I'm talking to. Why does your wife come to my meetings? I don't know, does she? Oh, yes, she does every time, and she leaves really happy. She knows how to talk to the weather. She's a weather warrior. She knows how to create things. She's a creator. She, she has ideas on around her. She knows how to be a soul doctor. What's a soul doctor? Ask your wife. And then I just leave. <laughs> this pink hair is a test. You know when you have colored hair, they have to test it to make sure it's going to be okay. They test the color. It's going to make work, work with your hair. God said it's a test. So no matter where you go in your life, if they don't like the pink hair, they're operating in the flesh. These are pastors he's talking about. They're in the flesh. If they love your pink hair and are excited about it, they're in the spirit. Make sure you go there and speak. <laughs> Who wants pink hair? <laughs> It is heaven culture. People in heaven have every color of hair. Amen. Every color of hair. Amen. There's nothing wrong with pink hair, people. Amen. Right? So what was I talking about? <laughs> the, royal the royal fast. You know how hard it was to give up pizza? Pizza, chocolate ice cream. My husband's flashing me with something. That's a signal, okay? I'll tell him in just a second. So I gave up Dr. Pepper, pizza, and chocolate ice cream for all those years. I mean, when I would speak on a cruise, I was allowed to have one scoop of ice cream on a cone. It always melted because people were always talking to me about heaven. I pretty much got to eat the, the cone. That was what I had. He said, when you move into your own house from where you're at now, which was Spoonbill over there 15, 17 years, that's where all this was created in Spoonbill. And he said, then you can break that fast. So I and my fast is broken. Yay! But the royal fast, that's what it means, is harder to give up the favorite things than it is, oh, you're on a bread and water fast. Okay, bread and water fast. No, you can't eat that. No, you can't wear that. No, don't go there. You've got to remember you're fasting it. Not talking about church. <laughs> but it's a new fast he's going to start. So if he says you're doing the royal fast, you know what that is, right? Write it now. We're going to make it on a t-shirt. <laughs> Why do we sell products? Because he asks us to. I am not, uh, what do you call that? What churches are? They're what? No, no, no. I'm a corporation. I'm a Florida corporation. A for-profit Florida corporation. Yet I'm not non-profit. If you give to me, it's Jesus blessing your life for the rest of your life. All the revelation is free, right? Am I charging you for any of this? No. The 400 hours online, do I charge you for that? No. If people do, that's them doing it, not me. So, I can't write it off, okay? That means you're on the blessing list. That means I'm going to pray for you. That means that you'll learn all the new things come out. We're starting a newsletter. Yes, it will be old school newsletter. No, I won't email it to you. It will come in the mail to you. I'm still trying to figure out my cell phone. I take pictures with it because I'm a photographer, okay? It's okay to write, people. You know some kids go to school and they don't even make them write anymore? They don't have to sign their name someday, eventually, right? Maybe not. <laughs> we'll have a school you have to learn cursive from. <laughs> we will also have basic photography classes. They will be free. My gift is photographer. Jen's gift is photographer. My brother, this is out of all the ones who are born through my mom. My brother is a photographer. My other sister is a photographer. He's going to make sure we had plenty of people to take pictures. Right now, I am the official photographer of the host of heaven. My phone is filled with pictures of the angelic realm. Angels are under Gabriel. The hosts are under Michael. They're fierce. Some look like creatures. Some have eight eyes. That doesn't make them bad, okay? They have eight eyes. They have six wings. They have no wings. They fly with just the air, with the light. That's the host of heaven, the army of heaven. The special ops group have flesh on them. They've been around a long time. They used to fight in the Old Testament. They're still here. I have some in my army. There's an army I command. Why? Because Christ commanded. Is that right? Say, Christ was the Lord of hosts. 
we get to command the host also. But if you got sin in your life, they won't do it. You send them to protect your family. You send them all over the world to take care of all things going on all over the world. I actually know that we have the right to speak to the weather because Christ did. Was that he stopped the storm? Our weather warrior stops storms. We didn't start soon enough with Hannah, but we didn't know about the wicked controlling it. Raise your hand if you know the wicked are controlling the storms now. Yes, they are. They have created things that can control the storms, that make them fierce, they can even tell them where to go. Except now they won't be able to. Because Milton was a whole different thing. When Milton came, we jumped on it right away. Because we, we speak to the high pressure systems to, to sit down on this, these storms. It diminishes them, it sucks the life out of them. They live and breathe on low pressure and warm water. So in Florida, that's why we have so many. We take authority over it. We also command the winds to die down. We send the host in there to shred the bands of the storm so then it begins to die. We hit it in the eye and command it to implode. The eye implodes, the head gets taken off, and it's in pieces. That is what happened to Milton. They even have pictures on the weather station. They have pictures of the eye imploding inside. They have it being shredded, and it was pieces. It was pieces of the storm left. Because weather warriors all over this world were taking authority. If everybody was, it'll be a different world. So I know I need to let you go. I'm going to show you one thing, if my husband will bring it to me. One of the things he asks us to create, and he's okay with it, is not the exact image, but he is an image letting you know things. Number one, the Father has a body. They think he's a spirit floating around. No, he has a body. Inside of the Father is not um, body organs and stuff. There's a mountain, a holy hill. There's the river of life that flows unending from him. There's gemstones all inside of him and fire underneath them. The fire hitting the gemstones in the crystal sea that's inside the Father throws the rainbow outside of him. That's where that comes from. When you were a little spirit, you jumped on the stones of fire. You swam in the crystal sea. And if you felt like being curious, you would run up his holy hill. I did all the time. I remember running up his holy hill. And I'd wash my hands in the river of life. They're clean. They're clean. Because he would speak to us. He would make himself small enough to go inside of himself to play with us. We were little spiritual beings like this. It was still you. It's what's inside of you now, your spirit and your soul. We are this big, right? About this big. We had, you know, sometimes a little bit of color in our hair. We had a little shifting on. We loved swimming in the river of life. We'd jump on the stones of fire and get this. The Wizard of Oz. Remember the yellow brick road? Yes. Inside the Father are the stones of fire, and they're like that. They create a big, in the center is the biggest massive gemstone he has. He told me one time, I'm going to show you how I create the rainbow for myself. I was caught up to heaven. I was just a few steps from him. He reaches by, he's left-handed, people. Amen. He reached in himself with his left hand and pulled out a gemstone that was like this big. The fire was still burning around it, so it was shooting rainbows off of itself. I'm eight years old when he takes me to heaven. Why? Because kids don't care what anyone thinks when they share something. I was excited. I, was, I already knew how the rainbow was made from him, right? From the gemstones, right? The stones of fire that Lucifer used to have on him. And people said, well, you know, they're lost now somewhere. No, they were taken away from him by Jesus Christ. On the third day, he stripped them of the stones of fire. You need to look at Ezekiel 28. That's the homework. Ezekiel 28 tells you how Lucifer was made. So in hell on the third day, when he rose from the dead, before that, he wasted hell. He melted the faces of the principalities and powers. They look like melted cheese. They still look like that today. Okay, then he reaches over, tears up Satan, leaves him in the dust and the coals, rips his glorious clothing he was wearing off, plucked every stone of fire off of him, put them in a bag, reaches over and takes the keys of hell, death, and the grave away from Lucifer and leaves him in that position, totally defeated in his own realm of everything he thought was powerful and beautiful. So the stones of fire are not on some planet somewhere waiting for them to be discovered. They're with Jesus Christ. Amen? 
So the father said, what you will produce as a for profit, you're going to make images of what you saw in heaven, what we show you. You're going, to, you're going to create apparel lines that people can dress like they do in heaven. Remember the culture thing? You're going to create witty ideas that they can use on this earth like they do in heaven. I want you to have a, a, a vision of Holy Spirit, one of the Father on the throne, and one of me, this is Jesus Christ telling me, with flames of fire in my eyes. So in my books, that's what you'll see. They have all got illustrations. This is the one of Holy Spirit that we did. I'm going to show it to you. He is invisible, but you can see the fire around his image, the rainbow around his image will outline him sometimes. Uh, he has a body, number one. It's a spiritual body, right? He travels. He carries his own portal of fire with him. The fire is around him. The fire comes off. It opens up, and then he goes in wherever he wants to go, to, and he brings the fire of God with him. In the book of Acts, in the upper room, that portal is still there that he came to 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 put the um, on all the disciples waiting. Remember that in the book of Acts? Yeah, that fire portal is still there. So this is what we have. We have some of these, what say, dangerous against hell. Yeah, be dangerous, live holy, be dangerous against hell. Amen. This one goes to Bishop and his wife. And I am done speaking. Um, tomorrow I have a lot to share for you. Uh, and I know that we're going to answer questions, which is one of my, you gave me an easy job. Because after going that long, and I've been taken back to the past, I saw him when he made the heavens and the earth, how he did that. It was from a drop of water. A drop of water. He's water for a lot of things. A drop of water. Jesus stepped out of the Father, because the Father said, he said, what to create. Jesus stepped out, or the Word stepped out, and he began to make it. So God said, I want a space, a physical space. We can put earth there, other planets there. There will be a sun and a moon. There wasn't a sun and a moon when he first made it. So when the earth was first made, when the dinosaurs were on there and they roamed around and stuff like that, the earth was lit with his glory. There was no sun. Because in the beginning is when time actually began. Before time was there first. So when he made earth and remade it, did he say the earth, the, 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 the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters? But everything was under water, is that correct? Water was around the earth. He would not have made it that way. What caused the water to be there, right? I know people are tired. Do I sound tired to you? I'm sorry. My, my, my meetings used to last four hours each. In Canada, they would all take a two-hour break, eat, come back, and have two more hours. So, I've been, I've been with even seniors till 1 in the morning. They didn't want to leave. The pastor left. The dinner they made for us was gone. Okay, I didn't care. I was there to share, right? There will be a day come when church will never be closed. Well, in that day, when you come in, you won't have to create the glory. It will be waiting. The glory clouds will be waiting. And you'll step into the glory when you come. And I know I'm jumping around because Holy Spirit says, tell them this, tell them this. This is my best friend, right? So that don't make him stop. I was taken in due time not too far in the future where people were going to go kill people with, with guns in the church because they, you know, they all lost that thing about them losing. Yeah, they're going to lose everything. But they had another way. They thought they'd just wipe out whole churches. So they came to this one church. It was in Florida. It was a big church. They ran up and they grabbed the handles and God melted their hands to the handles of the door. He melted their weapons to their chest. They were screaming so loud. People ran out of the church. What's wrong? They were glued to the door, and their, their weapons were glued to them. They started praying for them to be saved. They weren't praying for them to be healed. They called the police. They had to take the doors off the church and carry them away. So if you think divine protection is coming, that answer is yes. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. So look forward to these days coming on the earth. I already forgot what I was saying. He's staring at me like, what? Let them go. I'll let y'all go. I'll share it tomorrow. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was good. 
Thank you for coming. Amen. So fear not. Fear not, people. Fear not. Yeah, fight, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. I have actually contacted Trump and told him why I was here and asked him if he would text me with a message for you. He was at a rally, so he's probably going to send it to me, and I probably will have it by tomorrow. Yay. Amen. Yay. He loves for people to pray for him. Amen. He knows God moves. He knows that. So thank you for letting me come, and uh, bless you all. If you have to leave to go, I'll pray for y'all. I'm sure this won't be the only time I come here. <laughs> and so I'm going to give Pastor back the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Can you shout, shout, hallelujah. Glory be.